Hi there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com here with a spooky Innistrad flashback draft. Uh, this is probably the format I have the most experience drafting uh, throughout my limited experience. I used to be a limited player before I started Rogue Deck Builder. This is actually right the time period right before I started Rogue Deck Builder and then made the transition over to more constructed. So beforehand, I used to be almost exclusively a limited player and and be, be, I was a limited player because it was so expensive at the time to build a standard construction deck and you, I just seemed like you got more value as a, as a more fair playing field. So right off the bat we have the village villagers of Eastwald. I love going green black. Green black is one of my favorite strides. I also do like red. The rolling uh, Templar is a very good card in this in this format. It can kill off a ton of uh, there's creatures with flying though, but you can build like a flying deck around it. Rebuke's also a really good card. Absent Pilgrim. The Abitur Ghoul has to be really answered. I think I'm going to go with the Bump in the Night though. No, I'll go with the Abitur Ghoul. Uh, a 3-2 First Striker shuts down so much in the format. And I just had to make a quick decision there. That pack was really full of... of you could you could say you could go the Tree of Redemption. It's just not my play style. I don't like to play a really stalled out game. Now, Delver is good if you can get a first pick Delver. Uh, first or second pick Delver and then build a deck accordingly. And blue black is actually one of my favorite picks here. It looks like they probably took a red card. Statistically speaking, either a red or black card because there's only one red card in here. Harvest Pyre is actually a very powerful card. We have a Smite the Monstrous, which is, is actually not that great in this format because most of the cards are going to be under uh, power four or greater. And then Armored Scab is fine, late pick. It's a 1-4 it's a blocker. Delver Secrets is something that can flip, but you really, really have to build around it. Doom Traveler is a solid pick. And White Black is a lot better when you add Dark Ascension. But I think that Hamlet Captain is the best the best card here. It's between Hamlet Captain, Delver Secrets, and Doom Traveler. I could also make the uh, argument for the Harvest Pyre. And Mulch isn't bad either, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and take the probably just the Doom Traveler. I have a Woodland Cemetery now. I'm really kicking myself. We could go into... I wouldn't take it this this quickly. Uh, Brimstone Volley or Invisible Stalker. Both of them are, are extremely good. Invisible Stalker is probably the best uncommon to pick in the entire set because you can hook it up with a lot of a lot of cards. I think it might be... I can't remember where Spectral Processions is, if, that, if that's where Dark Ascension comes in a, in a, in a, into... Uh, but there's like Fear of the Bitten. You can put on Invisible Stalker. Now I'm really wishing I would have taken that, that Snapcaster Mage. But it's... This is a this is a tough pick. The Dark Thicket Wolf is really good. The uh, Feeling of Dread is extremely good. The Torment Pry is not bad. The Brimstone Volley is just an all-star. I think that when in doubt, geez, I don't want to... Blue looks wide open if they're not taking an Invisible Stalker, though. The good news is we have three solid picks so far. We have a Bump in the Night that could... Black Red is a really good... A really, really good... And there's the Fear of the Bitten right there. See, that's... I think I'll just take the Invisible Stalker. It is a incredibly, incredibly powerful card, especially if you get multiple, you can just build completely around it. Have a Clifftop Retreat, Typhoid Rats, Night Terrors is okay. The Makeshift Mauler is extremely good. And you only have to exile one card. But then we have the Moon Heron, which is very tough unless they're white to deal with. And there's also Feelings of Dread. We could actually go the white blue. Uh, Feeling of Dread's Invisible Stalker. There's the Fear of the Unbitten, like I said, that that hooks up perfectly with the invisible stalker we have a scourge which eh, it's okay i just think that the the best pick here is just gonna be a moon heron or a makeshift mauler and i think i'm gonna value the makeshift mauler just slightly over the moon heron and feeling the dread's a fine pick too but it looks like blue is wide open if they're allowing me to have you see, there's a Stitch Drake too, but I think Diagraph Ghoul might just be a little bit more powerful. I just I haven't quite decided what we're gonna what our second color is gonna be. The victim victim of night is okay in the format. It kills a bunch of creatures, uh, humans. Can't kill a zombie werewolf for vampire. So it's about 50-50 of what it kills. It kills spirits and humans in this format and any other like beast or spider. Somberwald Spider is actually an incredibly good card. It becomes a 3-5 with Reach. And Stitch Drake can just... It's sometimes be hard to cast, but I think Stitch Drake is just going to be the best card in here now that I know we're going to go into blue. It seems like blue is extremely wide open. And now when I say that, where's the blue? <laughs> it's completely gone out of this, this, uh, this pack. We also have a Corpse Lunge in here, which isn't bad. A Boneyard Worm. 
Uh, Bony Orb's a little bit hard to get going. This pack's actually pretty weak. Uh, Cobble Wings isn't bad when you get the zombie strategy, like the, the makeshift maulers. Disciple of Gristlebrand can actually save you versus aggro decks. I just think it's the Corpse Lunge, and that's that's a pick I'm not too happy with. So, Victim's fine here. We have a, Mar a Markov Patrician that's fine here. The battle the Battleground Geist is also okay. It's a 3-3 flying for 4. I, I do like the, the Markov Patrician, though. It's usually never... It's bad versus, like, Doom Travelers and other 1-drops. Um, but the Stitch of the Apprentice is also pretty good because you can sacrifice any creature that's going to die. Like, it, it helps you against removal. But I think I'm going to just go ahead and take the Victim over both of those. I think we want removal at this point. Mask of Avacyn can basically turn your guys into more invisible stalker-ish type cards. It's actually not that bad of a card equipment wise. Um, Lost in the Mist isn't bad because you can counter and bounce. The Stormkirk Patrol can get out of hand really quickly, but I think it's like Unruly Mob that we're going to take because I haven't 100% dedicated into uh, Crossbreed Vampire is not bad either. I've been, I know I'm going blue. I think that we have a powerful blue strategy. And both the Throbby and Cent uh, Sentry and Unruly Mob, but I think Unruly Mob is just a little bit better. So here we're still we're still wide open to... Jeez, the Bump of the Night came all the way back. This is this can be a very aggressive card. Dissipate's fine. It's just a counterspell. I, I tend not to like counterspells. I think the, the most powerful card here is either going to be Rebuke or Typhoid Rats. And again, I just don't know exactly what... I think that I'd rather go white than black at this point. I don't know what. We'll see. We'll see exactly. And there's a, a, I, I said Smite the Monsters isn't that great. Again, it, it, it's a decent sideboard card, though, if your opponent is going like a, a heavier, uh, a, a later creature base. There is a strategy. There's a blue, a blue-green strategy. It's a bounce and kind of dinosaur strategy. And Smite's really good against that. So might as well just take the Smite. And here, here I think I'll just take the Fuhrer. And there's another Fuhrer. So if we can get another Invisible Stalker, we could easily go into... Man, both these cards are terrible. And yeah, so we're all over the place with this, this first pick. I really thought blue was wide open, then it just dried up. They left me with Invisible Stalker, Mixed Jamal, and Stitch Drake, which are usually highly picks in blue. But we have we actually have some good... Uh, Fear of the Bittens that can hook up. Yeah, I, I do have no clue what I'm up, what I'm playing. We know that green's probably out of the mix. But we have a decent strategy for black, and we have a decent strategy for uh, white. Unruly Mob and Dude Travel worked very well with a, a blue strategy, because both these cards will... They come out early, they, they're, they're aggressive... But with those two Fear of the Bittens, I really want to go into some... If I want to get another Invisible Stalker, for sure. Or another just quick, quick card. Wow, we have a double rare here. We have a flip card, which is a Mayor. Which isn't a bad card, especially with the Invisible Stalker. Now I'm really wishing I would have gone into green. I think that green was... A very wide open at the start did dry up there at the end, or just maybe didn't have the, the best cards. So here we have another Makeshift Mauler, which I do think is the most powerful card. The cat, the Cackling Counterpart puts a token on the battlefield with a copy of Tart Creature you control. It's just two situations. It is instant speed, but I, I just don't like it in a limited format. It does have Flashback for seven. The Mayor is a very powerful card because it is all the humans you control. Uh, plus almost one, and then it flips, and then you can start putting out... <laughs> It is. This is so hard. I, I don't think I can pass up a mayor. It's just a backbreaking card in, in limited. We have the Geist Flame, which is fine for this strategy, and another makeshift mauler. And Into the Maw of Hell is good. Basically destroys any creature and a land, so you get two for one. The black is lackluster in this, except for the Umbera Rise is okay with a white strategy. And the white is actually pretty bad with the Gallows. So I hate taking a, a mayor, but there's really nothing else that... I think we needed too much in the deck. We have another Stitch Drake, or Burning Vengeance can actually be pretty good if you get enough flashback cards. It's where you, you need 
I think that you need Dark Ascension to really capitalize on a lot of the flashback cards. We have two awesome, 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 awesome. Um, geez, we have a Splinter. A Splinter Fight actually works with our strategy. But we have two great red cards here in the 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 Watchkeeper, which is a one five defender, but it flips, it becomes a five five. And the Blood Craze Neonaut is just a very quick, aggressive card that has to be has to really be answered, or otherwise it's going to get out of control. And then we have another Stitch Drake, which is just phenomenal. I think I'm, I, Splinter Fight really works well with the makeshift Mahler type strategy because it, it basically guarantees you have cards in the graveyard for Stitch Drake. And I'm not sure if I want to if I want to quite dedicate. It's a powerful card though. I think I'm going to take it. Now we're way now we're all over the place. Murder of Crows is the obvious pick here, or Brimstone Volley. We, I'm wishing I would have taken that other Brimstone Volley, but now I'm looking to go into green. And so Dark Thicket, Thicket Wolf is a very good card. Murder of Crows is going to be an obvious choice. It's uh, whenever another creature dies, you draw a card and discard a card. But it's a 4-4 four, for four, 5, which in this format, basically a 4-4 four, four flyer can outclass almost anything. The Ambush Viper is also good. The Dark Thicket Wolf is good. The Gnaw the Bone isn't too bad. I think we just take the murder of crows. And unfortunately, we have to pass up that um, really good brimstone volley. Now, a village ironsmith and a feral ridge wolf that can go in the aggro based strategy. A kinder catch isn't bad. A 6-6 six, six for 6 mana in this, in, this, uh, in this format is really good. But I do like the silent departure, even though it's a sorcery speed. What you do is just keep bouncing back any sort of flyer that they may have and then getting in for damage. The Think Twice is also very good, but Silent Departures is very underrated. And I think that it's it's the pick. Because I do want to go into blue, and I want to I want to try to guarantee that we get some more. Is this the one that draws a card? No, it's just a 4-6. Orchard Spirit's just basically a flyer, a 2-2 flyer for 3. We have another Avacyn's Pilgrim. We could have two of these. Rage Flower is very good. Whenever a creature dies, it deals 2 damage to target player. Uh, Full Moon Rise is okay. Ancient Grudge is okay. Desperate Raven is good if we're going to go into red. And again, I'm not quite sure if that's going to be the strategy. Yeah, I think I'd rather just to switch over into green because our power cards are over in green. We have two of the cards that are really good. And I'd like to give myself more reason to justify going into it. So I think I will take the, the Villagers. Uh, we have... A Frival Delusion is okay. Deranged Assistant is good for the self mill strategy. And so far, I'm, I'm kind of going that route. The Blood Craze, there could be another Blood Craze Neonaut. Someone's going to have a really good red red deck. The problem is, I feel sorry for the people left and right of me because I've really switched a bunch of times. I think that, I think we'll go with the Deranged Assistant. And we have a Think Twice, and here we go. We have a Scab Goliath. And this, you have to exile two creature cards, but with our self mill strategy, that shouldn't be that bad. We have Ranger's Guile is really good in this in this type of deck. Yeah, I still think it, I still think we want to do a green blue like bounce type strategy. I think twice is fine. Sensor Deprivation is actually a really good card because it shuts down an early drop. But the Goliath is something we want in this deck. Uh, Stitcher's Apprentice came back, or Hysterical Bli Blindness is good in this in this in this type of strategy where you're. Uh, you shut down your opponents on their turn and then swing in, shut down their opponents. It's actually not that bad of a card, but I think we need creatures that put other creatures into the graveyard to try to get these Stitch Strikes and um, Makeshift Mauler Scab Goliath online. So let me go ahead and pick it. There's The Makeshift Mauler did come back, so that's that's a great pickup. Prey Upon's in here too, geez. But it's going to be the, the, the Makeshift Mauler. Uh, here we have a Moon Mist that can actually prevent all combat damage for a turn and transform all, all werewolves. I don't quite think it's there. Burning Vengeance is not that decent either. There's just really nothing in here. I think we'll just take the Moon Mist just because it's it's more relevant than anything. And any none of these are that good. This this Travel's Amulet allows us to go into three colors if we absolutely need to. And we could end up splashing. We'll see. So the Feral Ridge Wolf is just the best card here. I don't know. It's Village Cannibal's okay too. They're both they're both fine. And if we have to go defensive, we can go defensive with the Grave Bramble. I think we'll get another one of these here. There was a ton of those going around.
And let's take the Swamp Girl on the next pack. Alrighty, so in this pack we have an Army of the Dam, which is okay. It's hard to get up at 8 mana. We have another Stitch Drake, which I really think that we want. The Boneyard Worm's okay. It is really more powerful when you can get... You can really rely on mulches and other ways to... Um, yeah, to, to really fill up your graveyard. But we're kind of getting rid of stuff with the Makeshift Maulers and the Stitch Drakes. I think Stitch Drake is the obvious choice here. We also have a Kieran Outlaw, which is the first strike that turns into a double striker, which isn't a bad. It doesn't have another. Yeah, and then they have Menace, too. Werewolves have Menace, which which is really, really powerful. But I think that, man, we could have three Abyss and Priests by this point. I think it's going to be the Stitch Drake. Forbidden Alchemy is fine here. It puts enough cards in our graveyard. We have the Mulch, though, which I think is what we need. And... The wooden sluice actually not not a bad. I hope this somehow comes back. One of my favorite strategies is going the route of the peasants with just a ton of one uh, one and two drops from red and red and uh, white. So it's between forbidden alchemy and mulch, but I think mulch is just a little more powerful in the deck we're trying to play. Well, I don't know. I actually don't know which one is better. I think forbidden alchemy is actually slightly better. Armored Scab is not what we want. Spider Spawnings. Yay, we're actually going to splash. This is an incredibly powerful card. Uh, we are exiling a ton, though, so it's kind of like a non-bow. We have nothing to hook up the Invisible Stalker so far. So, I do like the Spider Spawnings, but the Fezzeride Boar is a 4-4, four, four, or a 5-5 five, five Trampler for 4 mana, usually. Usually, you can set that up. I think I am going to go with the Spider Spawnings, though. And I think we're definitely into green. Could have three brimstone volleys. That's that's insane. I'm a, I'm a fan of Grizzled Outcast because it, can, it turns into a seven seven quite easily. We have the Selhof Ocul Oculus, which uh, Occultist, not Oculus. Uh, Occultist Sel Selhof Occultist is really good for self mill, which our deck does want. But I think we'd rather have a Grizzled Outcast over it. And we also have a, 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 hollow, a hollow Hinge Scavenger, which gains us 5 life. It's almost like a Thrag Tusk. But the Miramad Phantasm, I don't know. I think that it's not that. A 5-1, I think I'd rather have the Hollow Hinge. I'm not sure. The Miramad's a 5-1 for 5. And you'd have to get two of them to really make it worth it. And so I think I will take the Scavenger. It stabilizes you so well. And I do want to find one more way to... to Because we have two cards that can flashback. We'll play a basic Swamp in the deck just in case we draw it. One-Eyed Scarecrow is not bad. It's just a filler card against... Uh... Now we have the Wreath of, Wreath of Geist, which actually works very well with Invisible Stalker. I think I'll take the the wreath. There's another scavenger. I think is what our deck needs. Tribute to Hunger is a, it's a powerful card. I could easily splash for at this point. And the Demon Mail is also good because uh, you can sack a creature for the Morbid effect. And putting on like a Stitch Striker and Invisible Stalker doesn't seem bad. But unfortunately, I think it's going to be the scavenger. It's what our deck wants. Tribute to Hunger is not bad either. But another 4-5 that gains 5 life. Oh, this is... I'm going to take the the Demon Mail. I think we want ways to kill our own creatures. Very, very tough pick between the two. The Boar is fine. Another Forbidden Alchemy. Another, we have really good self-mill strategy. The Boar is also okay, but I think Forbidden Alchemy is what we want for value. 
Fist Ride Boar is awesome to hook up with Demon Mail. I think we're going to take the Forbidden Alchemy, though. Now the Bone can be a nice little sideboard card. Oh, Heartless Sunday is so fun to play. And I think it's better. Yeah, we'll put this in the sideboard, the Gnaw, just in case we're going up to a hyper aggressive a deck. And we have a first strike. Orgus plus one with a human. Not that great. Kinder Catch, if we end up having to play it, we'll play it. Moon Mist and Mulch comes back. So Trap of Dacian Blade, though, is awesome to hook up with either one of our flyers. We have two stitch strikes and an invisible stalker that is really good to um, put on. Mulch is a nice little self mill card, though. I think it's just barely better than a Trepidition Blade. So we have a lot of great self mill. The Fester Hide Board came back. It is a card we need. A Grizzle Outcast, something we can just play. And Moon Mist is, is okay if we need to go into Fog Effects. And I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this pack. I'm pretty happy with how the draft ended up. I know that we could have had, like, I think there was, like, two bumps we could have taken. No, I think like, we would have ended up with one bump. But we could have had a whopping three Brimstone Volleys, which is just an insanely good card in Limited. But this is this is a pretty good strategy, the green-blue, because it covers all of your bases. You're going to outclass all of your opponent's ground creatures with your with your green. And then you're going to have nice flyers, especially you're going to outclass the, with Stitch Drake. Stitch Drake is going to be bigger than most of the flyers in the format. So, I mean, now we have to really figure out um, how many... I mean, we're up to 14. I think we want all of our... We'll, we'll splash a one of Swamp and the Traveler's Amulet. Didn't we get an amulet? Yes, we did. And this can go grab us the one of Swamp. And now the Bone can come in against hyper-aggressive decks. I think we don't even need the, the Scavenger unless we go up against hyper-aggressive uh, decks either. The wreath I think is worth putting in here because there's a there's a few cards that I think it combos off really well with. And then the Festride Boar, that was a great pickup way late. And I actually like the villagers. And at this point though, I do think we're we're going to have to put the hollow hinge in the or the grizzled outcast i just think the outcast is just so slightly better than the hollow hinge and i might actually end up going with both of them because we basically are already playing 17 lands with the traveler's ambulate and we have the mulch so we can easily play both i think i think the, oh we already have one land in here somehow oh a swamp there's the one of swamp so we'll still have 17 lands don't think we want to splash for like the ghoul the Abator Ghoul or a Corpse Lunge. Nas fine. I think that playing 17 is fine. We're even milling ourselves quite a bit. Uh, I don't think we quite want the Kinder Catch. Yeah, I'm happy with how this how this worked out. Not as many evasive creatures as I would have liked if we could have got that that third Stitch Drake, but I think it was over the Mayor, right? That's what we picked over the Stitch Drake. So we have two little pumps. I think that's perfect. We'll see one uh, about 50% of the time, a little under 50% of the time. We will see a a pump spell. Maybe more silent departures. We have very little control in here. Yeah, very little. We need to go over the top of our opponent. We have a nice, nice uh, self-mill type strategy. And I think we want to make sure we hit... An island. So we're going to go 10 and 6. Yeah, that's fine. And I'm going to submit this and see how well we do, which I think we'll do fine. We have a lot of ways to dig for what we need. We have two makeshift maulers, Fessaride Boar, the Grizzled Outcast, all these things that can clog up the, the ground game. And then we do have like the Splendor Fry and the Invisible Stalker. Even the Festride Boar would trample to be hooked up to a pump spell and really get the job done. Even Scab Goliath. So I'm, I'm definitely okay with this. I've, I've, it, it's, it's a strategy that I usually like to get more of the Silent Departures or more of the other ways to bounce. But I've had worse. I've, I've had, definitely had worse uh, drafts than this. We got we got the the spider spawning, which is just an absolute blowout. And that if you can get enough creatures in the graveyard, 
Uh, you get a 1-2 green spider creature token with reach for every battle f for each creature in your graveyard, which we have 15 creatures in our deck. We're going to be self-milling. It's going to at least get, I don't know, like four tokens, I would say. We'll end up submitting this. All right, we'll see you in the games. This is Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com. Thanks for, thanks for watching.